Yes, well, we have the implementers and, of course, the healthcare managers here with us in the studio to give us insight. Let me quickly introduce, first of all, the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Ehanie. Thank Good you very much for joining us. Good morning. And let me also welcome to our studio Professor Mohamed Nasr Sambu, who is the Executive Secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, a very popular scheme here in Nigeria. I'm sure Nigerians are happy to have you with us. Uh, good morning, viewers. All right, and also with us here in the Abuja studios is Dr. Faisal Shoaib, is Executive Director and CEO of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Uh, Dr. Shoaib, delighted to have you again on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you for having me. Good morning, viewers. All right, and uh, another guest uh, who will be joining us for this conversation, of course, is a familiar face now on Good Morning Nigeria, is the Director General of the National Institute for Pharmaceutical Research and Development, NIPRID, Dr. Obi Adigwe. Dr. Adigwe, delight to have you with us this morning. Thank you, and it's my pleasure to be here to talk to Nigerians this morning. All right, uh, gentlemen, once again, I'd like to uh, have you with us on, on the program. Uh, let's begin the conversation with the Honorable Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Osage Ehane. Uh, Dr. Ehane, I mean, we are having this conversation now under the cloud of uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic, and the temptation is always very strong that our experience in uh, seeking to combat the pandemic has, of course, uh, revealed uh, the vulnerabilities that uh, we have in our healthcare system. So that could be almost an immediate take away but realistically we can reflect on the five years of the Buhari administration and keep uh, a track as it were of the milestones in the health sector and happily you've been with President Muhammad Buhari for almost five years uh, you came in first as uh, Minister of State in uh, 2015 November 2015 and uh, last year of course you became uh, uh, full if shall we say uh, substantive Minister of Health what uh, have been those defining issues in the health sector under the Buhari administration? While we're still on the issue of uh, primary health care as part of the aspects of the health sector, let's bring in now Dr. Faisal uh, Shwaib, who is the Executive Director and CEO of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. Dr. Uh, Shwaib, I, I mean, there's uh, no question about it that you will want to display the trophy of uh, Nigeria <laughs> defeating white polio virus as, as a major victory for us uh, in, in this country. But what else has been heartwarming in five years of the Buhari administration with particular focus? on primary health care. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, just talking about uh, the achievement of uh, what uh, polio virus uh, free status, I'm sure, brings a lot of uh, warm feelings to, to all Nigerians. Uh, and uh, I, I'll say this um, is another moment uh, in the lives of all Nigerians where, you know, we've come together and uh, defeated uh, a very ancient uh, disease and this really comes down to, to leadership the leadership that has been provided by uh, President Muhammad Buhari by the Honorable Ministers uh, of, of Health and really leadership at different uh, levels leadership from our development partners our donors I want to call out you know I want to uh, specifically appreciate uh, Mr. Aliko Dangote and the Dangote Foundation whose collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation really uh, helped us cross uh, the, the finish line. But when you talk about uh, leadership, I think uh, the leadership of uh, President Muhammad Buhari uh, in 2016 when we suffered a major setback in terms of uh, uh, finding white polio viruses in the Northeast uh, was very, very critical because at that point, uh, staff of uh, the Ministry of Health that had worked so much over the last 30 years, uh, staff of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, our development partners, were really, uh, you know, depressed because of this uh, setback. But he showed leadership by calling the troops together and say, even after the first few cases, go and find more cases. And here is 9.8 billion naira to make sure that we do not uh, make this uh, a, a, a protracted war. And this is exactly what, what we did, um, pulling everybody together, motivating everybody together. And, you know, yeah, you're absolutely right that uh, we're very excited. But beyond uh, polio eradication, one thing that we've also seen since uh, the Buhari uh, administration is a return 
in terms of confidence that our donors have in the system because they know he's transparent, he's incorruptible. So they can now see very, very clearly that whatever funds they put in the system will be judiciously used. And this is exactly what is happening. So around 2015, 2016, you may have, uh, 2015, 2014, you might have recalled that there were issues around accountability in the uh, use of uh, funding from the Global Fund, from Gavi. But since the advent of this uh, administration, we have seen more than a billion US dollars uh, in investment, specifically in immunization and primary health care, because of the confidence that uh, donors have in the system. But beyond that, how has that translated to the common man in the village, the common man in our community? In 2016, when there was an independent survey to see how well we're doing with routine immunization, the pentavalent tree coverage, one of the antigens of routine immunization that is used as a marker for how well we're doing in terms of uh, routine immunization, was measured. And we had only 33% coverage as of 2016. In, within three years, by 2019, by the end of 2019, last year, when uh, this uh, similar survey was conducted, we had more than doubled the numbers, more than doubled the coverage. So we're now at 67% from the most recent SMART survey. That is huge and unprecedented. And our donors, our uh, development partners are really uh, excited about the kind of uh, progress that we have made in making sure that not only have we increased the coverage in terms of uh, the antigens protecting our children, but in terms of equity, making sure that those who have been left behind for so many years are now being reached with life-saving vaccines. Those are progresses that we have to be very proud of. These are the types of things that we may not shout about every day. These are the things that, that may not make uh, the frontline pages uh, every single day. But these are slow and gradual, unprecedented progresses that we have to be very proud of uh, in Nigeria. Okay. How do all of this fit into primary health care? The Honorable Minister has so uh, eloquently mentioned how we're trying to bring primary health care as close as possible to where people live and work, making sure that in every ward we had one functional primary health care center. But apart from having one functional primary health care center, how do we make sure that because a Nigerian accesses care, he doesn't suffer catastrophic financial ruin? You know that most families are just one illness away from being very, very broke. What the Honorable Minister of Health, the Federal Minister of Health and our partners are all doing is seeing how we can use the Basic Health Care Provision Fund to provide a pooling of resources, including some funding sources from different areas. I'm sure my colleague, uh, Professor Sambo, will uh, elaborate more on that. But by pooling all the resources together, it makes it possible that those that have are able to put money in a basket so that those that do not have the poorest of the poor are also able to access care without paying so much money out of pocket right now over 70 percent of uh, nigerians are paying out of pocket for health care that they do need with the basic health care provision fund expect expanding the space of uh, insurance coverage we're able to not only reach more people with quality prim primary health care but we, we take very strong steps towards universal coverage so that nobody in nigeria will be able to will be denied care everybody will be able to access care where they live and they work this is one of the most prominent gains of this administration because President Muhammad Buhari for the first time in our lives approved that funding and that funding has already started uh, f uh, flowing so that no matter where we are, no matter where uh, we work, every Nigeria will be able to have access. Now when you look at the different parts of the health sector, you begin to see a coming together of all of these interventions right basic health care provision fund is working you are beginning to see a motivation even within the federal ministry of health human resources are very very uh, essential when you come to the national primary health care development agency you see hard-working staff i go to work saturdays sometimes sundays and i see st um, staff working around the clock right and when you ask them you're putting in so much 
and they say that is what public service is about that we put in the best and we are motivated because the environment provided by the honorable minister the environment provided by the president is the kind of environment that pushes us to try and provide primary health care to the people that uh, that really desire it we're not where we would like to be but what gladdens our heart is that we're making steady progress we're beginning to introduce introduce even new vaccines we're looking at how a disease like uh, cervical cancer will now be uh, reduced to the barest minimum because in the next quarter in the first quarter of 2021 we're looking to introduce uh, the human papilloma vaccine we're introducing a rotor uh, virus vaccine so that it will cut down the number of children who die from preventable uh, diarrhea uh, diseases so it's really an exciting time to be uh, in the health sector where you can see that more funding is coming from the basic health care provision fund our donors are bringing in money and when our donors our development partners see that the funds that they are bringing into the space is being used judiciously and it's being it's yielding results like we're able to eradicate polio we're making progress in routine immunization and we're beginning to strengthen uh, primary health care they can see that we have been able to renovate close to 40 thousand primary health care uh, centers mm. we've okay, been able to Dr. expand dr shrivel let, let me I'm, I'm sorry to interject but yes. I, I i have to put you on hold for a while there's so many questions to ask on their primary health care i don't even know where to start with you um the honorable minister talked about new models of primary health care centers i'm wondering if these new models uh, uh fit into the rri you know that was started in i think in 20 uh, 17 or thereabouts. That's the rapid response initiative that comprise building some 10,000 primary health care centers. But please let me just put you on hold and bring in the um, executive secretary of the national, um, bring in uh, Dr. Schreiber. Um, Doc, <laughs> again, let me also congratulate you on the polio free status. It must have come with quite a lot of hard work, commitment, and dedication. But we're still battling with other, you know, uh, uh, diseases. Lassa fever is there, cholera is still there, meningitis is still there. Which brings me to my question. I, I'm, I'm wondering why it takes us time to curtail some of these diseases what are the issues you know that we're having to deal with is it issues of uh, maybe expertise is it that of uh, surveillance is it I don't, I don't know right yes congratulations is to to every nigerian and it's not just the the federal ministry of health and its and its agencies i mean we all pull together to get uh polio kicked out of our, our communities but really in terms of uh, the various uh diseases that we have uh to confront uh, in the course of the next few years, it's not really uh, a shortage of expertise. We do have people uh, who know exactly what to do, but it's also being able to mobilize uh, communities uh, into implementing all of those interventions uh, that are required. So, for example, issues around water and environmental uh, sanitation, people knowing exactly what they need to do when it comes to protecting their kids from uh, vaccine-preventable diseases, making sure that at the appointed times that they are supposed to take their kids uh, for vaccinations, having the right information about how to protect themselves uh, from uh, diseases. I mean, an example that we're already seeing uh, is even with the COVID-19 outbreak where we still have uh, some community members, uh, Nigerians, who don't believe that uh, there's any uh, pandemic of COVID-19, who think that it's all a ruse. You know, so it bears uh, very, very uh, consistent uh, risk communication. It requires uh, that we provide the right information about uh, uh, how to promote health, how to influence uh, decisions around health. And this is why in uh, 2018, President Mohamed Buhari launched the uh, Community Health Influencers uh, Promoters uh, Services, a scheme that we're rolling out all across Nigeria that will ensure that in every community, we have somebody who has been identified in the community that can provide the correct information about uh, disease conditions and how to prevent them. Making sure that uh, in the next few years, 
once we have uh, sort of uh, put the footprints of these so-called chips agents uh, in our communities they'll be there uh, to be to also help with uh, treating uh, malaria after doing uh, the r rapid diagnostic uh, test so there are a number of uh, factors that we have to uh, con uh, um, contend with but we're also seeing how our engagement with the traditional leaders with religious leaders uh, is really uh, becoming uh, very very fruitful very very critical towards our ability to eradicate uh, polio very instrumental uh, in our rapid progress towards uh, covering uh, kids against uh, vaccine preventable uh, diseases because these are the individuals who are providing the correct information to community uh, members so that community members know that uh, from trusted sources uh, they are getting information about the need to go for <coughs> antenatal care when they are pregnant and make sure that they have their deliveries uh, within the confines of uh, a health facility where they can be attended to by trained uh, uh, medical uh, personnel i think it does bear saying that uh, this has been five years of uh, really creative innovative uh, interventions in the health sector but this does not mean that we are painting a rosy picture of everything being okay in the health sector no we still have a lot to do and we still have the time to do it but you can imagine that after several decades of neglect for example of primary health care centers it's going to take some time investments like the basic health care provision fund for us to move from minus z minus one from z below zero to where we need to be and that is the gradual step that we're taking like they say the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step we've taken several steps in the last few years of the buhari administration and we're pretty confident that under the leadership of uh, mr president and uh, the honorable minister we will actually be able to deliver uh, as close as possible uh, to what uh, would like to see in uh, universal health coverage. We have up to 2030, but with every piece coming together, the vitalization of the primary health care centers, uh, the uh, insurance scheme being expanded and made mandatory, mandatory, that it's easier for us to be able to uh, reduce some of the unacceptable high levels of uh, maternal and child uh, deaths. Yes, progress is being made, but we are in a hurry. We're impatient with the current status, and I'm sure that everybody in the Federal Ministry of Health, uh, the staff at the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, are working so hard to make sure that we reverse these trends. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shwaib. Uh, once again, Professor Mohamed Nasir Sambo uh, of uh, the NHRS. Now, one of the widely reported issues about the NHRS before your tenure does it for us on the program. We well, thank you for being with us. We're back on Monday, same time, 7 o'clock in the morning. And until then, enjoy your weekend. But remember to stay safe and be well. I'm Kingsley. Sadalo. Bye bye.